Welcome back, my fellow intrepid psychonauts. Uh, today, I would like to dive into a topic that a lot of you have been commenting and questioning about, and that is something called sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis, for the uninitiated, is defined to be a combination of muscular atonia, which is basically an inability to move your muscles, or sometimes even feel them, or even feel yourself breathing, uh, that is often caused by REM sleep so that we do not actually act out the actions that we would be in our dream combined with hypnagogic imagery or in other words hallucinations. So why some people I think find sleep paralysis to be so unpleasant and so uh, undesirable is that they don't really understand what's going on and they start to panic because of the uh, sort of uncomfortable nature of the state at first. So what I want to do in this video is give you some techniques uh, some step by step, a step by step guide into turning uh, this unpleasant, uh, undesirable state, this sleep paralysis state that gets such a bad rep, into actually something very welcomed, uh, a gateway to powerful lucid dreaming experiences. So, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, the first thing that you need to know in order to do this is that sleep paralysis is just a simple, natural physiological process, and that you wouldn't panic about having your feet fall asleep or your hands fall asleep or something like that. So there's no real need to panic about, um, about sleep process because essentially this is just happening simultaneously all over your body. Neurologically this may not be the case but I think that we can analogously apply this here uh, to say that though it may be an uncomfortable physical sensation, you're not in any actual physical danger. So the step-by-step -step things that you're going to do is step one, do not panic. When you panic and you are in sleep paralysis, you create a forward feedback loop into a very unpleasant experience. What do I mean by that? That your mind is going to have a say in the hallucinations that you're seeing. And if you start to panic, your mind will manifest more panicked hallucinations and that will in turn panic you more. And this will cycle forward and forward and forward until you have a very unpleasant experience. This is what I think often happens when people report uh, seeing uh, being possessed by demons as sleep paralysis or sleep paralysis being they think they visit, got a visit from an angel or maybe even abducted by aliens in a UFO. Unfortunately, it's not that cool. It's just a set of physiological processes that occur that uh, make it sort of unpleasant for you uh, in the duration and that you have some agency over that so you're going to project your own types of hallucinations whether you believe in angels and demons or UFOs uh, into that context so that's where I think that comes from only my speculation of course so step two that we're going to do without further ado is now that we've relaxed and understood why we can relax is that we're going to start to imagine, and this will probably help further our relaxation, a very comfortable place, a very a place that we feel very comfortable and know very well. This is much like the wake the back to bed method that we've talked about before. So when you start to feel these images and see these images a little more vividly than just simple thoughts in your head, maybe you start to see flashes on the backs of your eyelids or something like that, we're gonna move to step three. Step three is to go to another location within the same comfortable area that you've already been imagining that you can also imagine in vivid detail. And again, you feel comfortable here. This is in effect going to ground us further into the dream state because this is the direction we want to be going if we want lucid dreams. You would be grounding yourself in the waking state should you actually just want to abort sleep paralysis and get out of there. By going to this location, Hopefully you've deepened your trance and your, your, your mind state, your visualizations into this scenario even further and essentially I would argue now that you are in fact transitioned into a lucid dreaming state and you have performed the fable desirable wild technique uh, or wake initiated lucid dreaming, a lucid dreaming that occurs with no lapse in consciousness. Notice how the reality check was not actually necessary when using this method. For me, when this has been the case, it has led to my absolutely most powerful vivid lucid dreams of all. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe it'll ease your mind a little bit about pursuing lucid dreaming uh, and, and sleep paralysis in general because it's really not something to be afraid of is the whole take home point is that it's actually something very close to a lucid state that you would want to work towards because you're pretty much almost there once you get there. Cheers! This has been Mnemonics.